In this video, I will teach you how to model the kinetics of a batch fermentation in SuperPro Designer. Here you see a summary of the instructions. In the rest of the video, we will go through them step by step. Much of this information can also be found in Appendix A3C, that is page 1304 and onwards, of the SuperPro eManual provided on Brightspace. In tutorial 10, you have already learned how to model stoichiometric fermentation, in which the degree of conversion of the reactants is chosen beforehand. In contrast, a kinetic model, as shown in this video, can show you the degree of conversion based on the metabolism of the production organism. The model in this video is based on a case study on penicillin production from the course Bioprocess Design 2019. The case study concerns a fed batch fermentation with two stages. The first stage is a batch fermentation at high initial sugar concentration, during which the biomass grows. The second stage is a fed batch fermentation at low sugar concentrations, during which the cells produce penicillin. In this video, I am going to focus only on the first stage. Here you see the flow sheet that represents the batch fermentation, with on the right the relevant data and parameter values given in the assignment. I have already defined the physical state calculation toolbox, registered the components and defined the streams and most of the operating conditions. You can learn how to do these things from Giuseppe's earlier tutorials. We start the kinetic model by adding the operation called ferment kinetic. Before we can define the fermentation kinetics, we need to register the reactions that occur. Two reactions take place in the fermenter, biomass growth and maintenance. During biomass growth, the sources of carbon, nitrogen and electrons are converted into biomass and waste products. The stoichiometric coefficients of this reaction are not given in the assignment. You can calculate them in whatever way works best for you. I use the solver in Excel. Make sure you mind your units. The biomass yield is given in kilograms of biomass per kilograms of sugar, but I need it to convert it to moles per moles. We can model the maintenance simply as the burning of glucose and oxygen into carbon dioxide and water. Now that we have defined the stoichiometry of the reactions, we can move on to the kinetic equations. We know from the assignment that the biomass growth follows monokinetics, so this equation is what we want to get into SuperPro. However, we are presented with a weird and complicated looking equation full of placeholders. Don't get spooked by this monster, we'll go through it together. Our goal is to fill in these placeholders in such a way that this equation in SuperPro gives the same result as the equation we were given for the growth rate. In the left hand side of this equation, it just says rate. In order to specify which rate will be calculated, we need to select a rate reference component since mu is given in units of biomass produced per units of biomass existent per hour, so it describes the production rate in biomass, we select here biomass. Then we look at the substrate terms. The kinetics equation in SuperPro has three S terms, each of which can be filled in with one of these options to describe how the reaction rate depends on the substrates and potential inhibitors. If we look at our given equation, however, we see that we need only one S term and that it needs to contain this expression from the Monod equation. The other two S terms can stay empty. The substrate used in the Monod equation is glucose, which we select here. We furthermore need to define the Monod constant. It is given in the assignment, but again, we need to be attentive to the units. SuperPro requires the kinetic constants to be given in milligrams per liter. We move on to these three parameters over here. The maximum growth rate speaks for itself and is given in the assignment. Alpha is a dimensionless constant that can be used to scale this term in the equation or mute it altogether. We do not need this in our target equation, so we leave its value at 1. Beta can be used to model a constant continuation of the rate that does not depend on a substrate. 
We do not need this term, so we leave it at zero. What remains is the biomass term. Because look, even though our equation in SuperPro looks a lot like our target equation now, there is one important difference, the units. The given specific growth rate is presented in kilograms of biomass produced per kilogram of biomass present per hour. SuperPro, however, requires the units to be kilograms per cube per hour. In other words, grams per liter per hour. We can overcome the difference by multiplying with the biomass concentration, which we express in the B term. You can see now that the equation in SuperPro is the same as the target equation. So that is our kinetics for the biomass growth defined. Amazing! But we're not done yet. Let's move on to the kinetics of the maintenance. The maintenance is defined simply as a constant, 0.03 kilograms of sugar per kilogram of biomass per hour. Based on what we know from modeling the biomass growth kinetics, our first guess might be to implement our maintenance like this, with sugar as the rate reference component, the given value as a negative value for beta, and of course the biomass with empty S terms. Alternatively, you could put that value here as alpha. If this works for you, that is awesome, and I would always encourage you to experiment. In my personal experience, however, this method is unreliable. Sometimes it gives nonsense answers, and running the simulation often takes a very long time. I'm not entirely sure why, but it seems that SuperPro struggles with negative values in the kinetics. Luckily, there is a solution, because there is a way to circumvent negative values altogether. The maintenance rate is currently negative because it is expressed as consumption of sugar. But we can instead express it as production of carbon dioxide. We just have to do some extra calculations to convert the given maintenance value. To use the converted value for the maintenance, you first have to change your rate reference component to carbon dioxide. After all, we are no longer calculating the consumption of sugar, but instead the production of carbon dioxide. Then you can use your newly calculated value in the same way that you would have used the maintenance value before. And that's it. We have a kinetic model. Time to run it and see what happens. In the last section of this video, we will have a look at the output of our model and compare it to the results that Giuseppe obtained with the model of the fermenter that he constructed in Mathcad. In order to do that, we need to visualize our data. In my opinion, this is most easily done by exporting them to Excel. In the Operation Data window, we go to the tab Profiles and select the variables that we want to see. We go to Dynamic Data Records, and from there I follow the steps that you have seen in Tutorial 10.1. Now we can easily compare the concentration profiles calculated with SuperPro to those calculated with Matcad. We see that the times at which the sugar is depleted and cell growth stops are about the same. The small, negligible difference is the result of the different integration algorithms used by the two programs. The final biomass concentration, however, is quite different and sugar concentration seems to initially go up, which is entirely unexpected. The cause for these differences becomes immediately clear when we look at the liquid volume in our reactor. While, according to the MathCAD model, the liquid volume remains constant, our SuperPro model shows a reduction of about 20%. The reason is that the MATCAD model does not take into account that a considerable amount of water evaporates out of the reactor during fermentation. Because our SuperPro model does consider evaporation, it is more accurate to reality, but also a bit more difficult for us to verify right now. In real life, evaporation is remedied by condensation of the off-gas at 2 degrees Celsius. Yet, at the current liquid volume and gas flow rate, a considerable amount of water is still lost. 
Luckily, we can still show that our model is accurate by simply adjusting the concentrations of biomass and sugar for the volume loss. The resulting concentration profiles are exactly as predicted by the MathCap model. This shows us that our kinetic model does work as it should. So, now you know how to model the kinetics of a batch fermentation in SuperPro Designer. I encourage you to play around with the options and see what other things you can do. Good luck and see you next time.